Good morning. Our watch word for the week comes from Philippians chapter 2, verses 7 and 8. And being found in human form, Jesus humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Again, Philippians 2, verses 7 and 8. If you would be so kind as this morning, if you would stand with me and uh, turn to hymn number 113 in your Moravian hymnal, we will sing together, All Glory, Loud and Honor. get you to remain standing this morning. Uh, we've already kind of given a welcome and we do thank each and every one of you for being here. Our announcements are uh, just real quickly our Easter egg hunt tonight at five. Holy Week reading starting tonight at seven will be every night this week. If you need a detailed list it is on the back or inside your bulletin. Um, <clears throat> choir practice and uh, don't forget, uh, Flat Ridge is having a women's conference on April the 15th at 9 a.m. Everybody is invited to come. And also don't forget about our 83rd annual Apple Blossom Festival. And that is on the 16th of April. And start at 2.30 with a band prelude. And 3 o'clock, our service will start and we will have barbecue on that day. Uh, Sunrise service next Sunday morning at 7 a.m. And there will be food after that is, uh, is done. If you would, while you have your Moravian hymnal, turn to the liturgy on page number 31. And you may want to stick your finger there because we're going to sing Hosanna today. That is the hymn on 115. So you may want to go over and stick your finger in there. As we get ready to start this prayer, 
of liturgy uh, for Palm Sunday, I'm going to I'm going to ask a question or two. I don't know who all has at our house this morning. It was chaos. Most of the time it is, right? Sunday mornings, it some, seems like something always pops up on a Sunday morning. And uh, we're just running and we're just things is, is, doesn't seem like it wants to fall together. And I think it's Satan's way of saying, you don't need to go. You don't need to be there. It'll be all right. Just take a Sunday. But I'm thankful that you came this morning. So we're going to take just a minute. And I'm going to ask you, bow your head, close your eyes. And I'm going to ask you just to say, thank you, Lord, for getting me here today. You brought me to worship. And worship is what we need. God, help me to release the things of this world. And allow you to enter in. Allow you to fill me up. So that my cup runneth over. In all things we give honor and praise. Through Jesus. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. Just a time to catch your breath this morning. Alright. Let's start in our uh, liturgy this morning. heaven and be joyful O earth for the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it rejoice greatly O daughter of Zion shout O daughter of Jerusalem behold thy king cometh unto thee he is just and having salvation blessed be the Lord God of Israel for he has visited and redeemed his people and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David as he spoke by the, by the mouth of his holy prophets who have been since the world began. That we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. To perform the mercy promised unto the fathers and to remember his holy covenant that he would grant unto us that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And you can be seated.
Behold, his tabernacle shall be with men. Yea, he will be their God, and they shall be his people. Justice and judgment are the habitation of thy throne, O God. Mercy and truth shall go before thy face. Blessed are the people who know the joyful sound. They shall walk, O Lord, in the light of thy countenance. A bruised tree will not break, and the smoking flax will not quench. He will bring forth judgment unto truth. Say unto those who are of a fearful heart, Be strong and fear not. Behold, your God will come and save you. He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom. The voice of the herald cries, Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Rejoice in God, your Savior, for he who is mighty has done great things, and holy is his name. Through the tender mercy of our God, the day spring from on high has visited us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. Please stand. The choir will the sing first. Adam will sing with the congregation on Hosanna. And don't forget to repeat.
Blessed be thou who dwellest between the cherubim, and graciously, graciously regardest them of low estate. Praise the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endureth forever. To, to him be glory and power, from everlasting to everlasting. Amen. get a couple of ushers to come we're going to give just a second for Adam to catch his breath as he runs across back and forth but we're very thankful to have the opportunity to take up our morning tithes and offerings and be blessed by the choir let us go to the Lord in prayer father we thank you for the gift of life you have given us enough help to be here strength, and you guiding our path, pouring out your blessings. Oh, I hope we can all feel your presence this morning. And Heavenly Father, as we give back just a portion of what you've given us, may it bless the building of thy kingdom and to help us as Willow Hills always be good stewards and obedient to thee. Thank you, in Jesus' name. Amen.
Thank you very much. You can be seated. Uh, again, if you would pick up your Moravian hymnal and turn to the hymn 114, you can remain seated, but we will sing together, Right On, Right On in Majesty. God is good to us, isn't he? He just seems to overwhelm us with blessing after blessing after blessing. I don't deserve all the blessings that I get, and I do apologize for being uh, going through stuff while y'all are singing a hymn, but sometimes the Lord says, I know what I had you prepare, but maybe it's this that you need to do this morning. And I'm just not quick enough to change without a little bit of reading over it. So uh, if you would this morning, turn to the Gospel of Matthew. And we're going to go into uh, Matthew 26. Matthew 26. And if you'll hold your finger there and turn over to the Gospel of John in chapter number 17. We sang the song, the choir sang the song Gethsemane. And that song always touches my heart 
because when Jesus was praying in the Garden of Gethsemane the night that he was betrayed, he kept praying, Father, if this cup can pass from me. He said, if it can pass from me, not my will, but yours be done. And I know you heard that sung. And when we sang the song, it says, Abba. He's saying, Daddy. It's in a loving tone that he's crying out to God Almighty. He knew what he was sent for. He knew what he was there to do. He had no issues with that because we know that we read over in Hebrews that it was the joy that was set before him. He endured the cross. And that's for all of mankind. Because we read in John 3, 16, for whosoever will. I'm one of the whosoevers. It doesn't matter what nationality, what your race, what language you speak, or anything else. We're all considered equal at the foot of the cross. Jesus was praying here in the garden. In Matthew uh, chapter number 26, and, and starting in verse 39, he has done talk to his disciples. He's done told them that you're going to be offended uh, because of me this night. He says, as a matter of fact, he has done told Peter, he said, you're going to deny me three times before the cock crows. What did Peter say to him? I, if I die, will not do that. And we know that he did. But he takes him up to the garden and we see, and let's back up to 36 and we'll read just a little bit right here. It's verse 36, he said, Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane. And said unto, unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and he began, began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then said he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And he cometh unto the disciples and findeth them asleep, and saith unto Peter, What, could ye not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is what? It is weak. And he goes back in verse 42, and he went away again the second time and praying said, saying, O oh my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then cometh he to his disciples and saith unto them, Sleep on now and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. Behold, he is at hand that doth betray me. Let's pray. Father, we're so thankful this morning for your Son. Oh, on this Palm Sunday, we know that he entered into Jerusalem as a king. Sitting on a donkey. And people was crying out, Hosanna! While laying their coats and their palm leaves, cutting down the branches and put them on the path so that he didn't touch the dirt. And we're thankful for it. But I'm thankful for Jesus who took the cup and he drank it in my place. He took my sin upon him. And God, as we realize that, as we see that, as we know that, I thank you so much for allowing him to come the sacrifice that you made for us. What a Savior. 
you are. Teach us this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, now if you'll flip over to John chapter 17, we're going to read a little more scripture. Sometimes the Lord just gives me everything, and sometimes he says, just use my scripture. This is praying on the, Jesus praying on the way to the garden. He is talking to his disciples, or had talked to his disciples. And uh, as he is praying, here is some of his prayer. And he's praying for you and for me. He's praying for our direction. He's praying we can learn a lot in this prayer. It says, These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy Son, that thy Son may glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him, And this is life eternal that they might know thee, that they may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. I have manifested thy name unto men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they received them, and have known surely that I come out from thee, And they have believed that thou didst sent me. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me. For they are thine. And all all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through, thee, through thine own name, those who, whom hast given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that, gave, that thou gavest me, I have kept. And none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. And now I come to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth, and thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, and they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me, and the glory which thou gavest me I have given them, and that they may be one even as we are one, I in them and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them and hast loved me. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me. For thou lovedest me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world hath not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me, and I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. 
And uh, I thank you for bearing with me in the reading this morning. When we, when we see Jesus praying, not only at the garden when he is saying, Abba, Father, when he is saying, Daddy, and boy, when we cry out, Daddy, it's a term of endearment, right? It's a love. It's a, a special bond. When we cry out to our Daddy, And he says, if this cup can't pass from me, not my will, but yours be done. He said, I'm willing to take this cup. I'm willing to take it for each and every person that is sitting in Willow Hill this morning. He knew that you would be here today. He took the cup. What was the cup? Well, back if you go back to uh, a Roman tradition and Roman ways where the cup actually came from was the simple fact in their armies if somebody done something that was against Roman law and they would go to their platoon or whatever you want to call it I don't know it's about 16 or 18 people and they would go to them and they would have a cup that had poison in it they knew that somebody was ready to get ready to die however they would go in front of them and they would ask people to point out the man who done the wrong, who done the deed. And if nobody would point out the man, then they would pick somebody and force them to drink of that cup of poison. They didn't care if they killed them all. It didn't matter to them. But they were going to get the one who they wanted, even if they had to slaughter them all. Jesus said, he said through his love, I don't want those that you have given me to have to go through this. He said, I'll drink the cup. I'll take the punishment. I will take that writhing agony upon a cross. I will take that death. I will take the fact that they're going to Put a spear in my side and they're going to see blood and water come out. He said, I will take that agony so that they can have life. Oh, let them not forget what has happened. The reason that I read John chapter 17 is it backs up the... the the fact that Jesus went to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray. He left some of the disciples here and he took a few with him and he went and he said, now y'all pray with me, but I want you to stand here and watch. And I'm going to go on. My, I'm, matter of fact, didn't he say he was agonizing in, in uh, Matthew chapter 26? Um. Anyway, I can't find it right now. It's not standing out to me right off the bat, and that's okay. But he says, y'all stay here. And he comes back, and he goes and he prays to the Heavenly Father, and he comes back, and they're asleep. Folks, I think that sometimes we're asleep behind the wheel today. God has given us the authority to walk in His name, to talk in His name, to speak truth to people in His name. And you say, well, preacher, I do that all the time. I tell them the truth. We have got today to the truth is so watered down, people don't understand. We're so quick to not want to offend, and I'm not trying to offend anybody this morning. By no means am I trying to offend. But what I'm saying is we've, We've quit calling the truth the truth and said, well, this is where I believe. If the Bible says it's a truth, it's a truth, and we can call it a truth, and if nobody likes it, I hate it for them. The truth will stand when the world's on fire. But he goes and he prays, and he comes back, and they fell asleep. And he wakes them up, and he says, come on, would, can you not watch with me one hour? I feel like sometimes that I let him down just like that. I've asked you to do one thing and you didn't do it. You ever feel that way? I have on several occasions. He says, I'm going back to pray. Watch with me again. He goes and he prays and he prays basically the same prayer and he comes back. 
there they are, sleep again. Good thing I ain't Jesus because I would have told them, boys, I ain't even going to let you go with me. You done made me mad. You won't watch with me. You won't stick with me. You won't stand up with me. Just for a little while. How are you going to stand for a long term? And I think that's the reason we get to the prayer in John chapter 15. Matter of fact, he comes back, he goes to pray the third time, he comes back and he says to the disciples, he said, just sleep on now and take, take your rest. For behold, the hour has come and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. But in John chapter 17, we get that... Uh, Turn to the wrong place. In John chapter 17, we get the fact that he is praying not only for his disciples, but he is also praying for us in the fact. <laughs> I know why I couldn't find John chapter 17. I took my paper out to mark it. But he is praying for us when he speaks the word that... He says to the heavenly Father, he said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify thy Son, and that thy Son may glorify thee. He starts praying, not just for himself, but he starts praying for, the, for us. He says, as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. You know who he gave? As many as would come. Whosoever will. That's what he gave. Those whosoever will would call upon his name and call him Master and Savior and Lord. Those are the ones that he gave to Jesus Christ. And when he came, he said, allow them to see. And allow me to give back to you those that you have given me. Let me lift them up to you. He says, this is, a life eternal, uh, this is life eternal, that they might know the only true God. And Jesus Christ, whom thou sent. He said, I have glorified thee on earth. I have finished the work which thou givest me to do. And he says, and now, in verse number 5, And now, O Father, glorify me with thine own self and with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. He said, go ahead and let me come on home, Daddy. I have finished what you've sent me here to do. Let me come home. Can you imagine? And I don't know as I've ever thought of it this way before. Until today. Jesus knows all the wonders of heaven. He knows the glory that is there. He knows he had lived. He had watched his daddy speak a world into existence. He had watched him form mankind of the dust of the ground and breathe the breath of life into his nostrils so man became a living soul. He had watched as all this transpired down through the years, and yet he was willing to live that, to come and live this agonizing life that we live here on earth. And the reason I say it's an agonizing life here on this earth, I'm not trying to say it's all bad, but I am trying to say there's something going on all the time, isn't there? There's troubles, trials, tribulations. There is things that's going on that we can't explain. There's things that is just, and this old body aches and hurts. And Randall and I was talking about that this morning. Uh, uh, you know, the older you get, the more the aches and the pains come. He was willing to leave the glories of heaven. He was willing to sacrifice that as well as come here and die on the old rugged cross. What a love he must have for us that he was willing to do those things. In, verse, in chapter 17 of John, we see the prayer that was given. That was made on mine and your behalf. It wasn't just the ones that was there that day. It was on mine and your behalf as well. And we see that he asked the Father to keep us in his name. 
He said, I gave them the truth. And I've shown them how to live. I've given them the example. Help them to stand in the truth. What a Savior that we have. He said, I've given them, in verse 14, I've given them thy word, and thy world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I may have to live here, but this is not my home. I have a better place to go to. Hallelujah and praise the Lord. He said, I don't pray, verse 15, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. He prayed a protective hedge over you and me. And boy, I'm glad he did because could you imagine how much worse it would be? We see enough bad in this life with that protective hedge. What if it wasn't there? He says, they are not of the world even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through what? Through thy truth and thy word is the truth. This is the way that we're tested. This is the way that we're, oh, I shouldn't say tested. This is the way that we're tried. This is the way that we know is by this word of God, are we living for him or not? I ask you this morning, you say, well, this may be just kind of some utterance of different things, but I want you to know what he's done for you. He was willing to take a cup. Let me back up. He was willing, number one, to leave the glories of heaven to come here. Then he said, Father, if this cup can't pass from me, if it can't go no other way, he said, I'll die for these people that you've given me. You are one of the people that was given to him. He prays a protective hedge for you before he goes on a cross to die. That's the kind of Savior that we have. That's the kind of truth that is revealed in him that lets you know his heart's desire and even when they nailed him to a tree and they stood that old cross up what did he say he said father forgive them for they know not what they do even the sinners that's coming to take me even the sinners that put me on this cross even the ones this morning that are uh, the other day that cried out crucify him crucify him father forgive them because they don't know what they do I have troubles loving enough sometimes. But then when I see that kind of love, I'm like, boy, do I fall short. And Father, have I got a long way to go. But I want to get there. He left the glory of heaven for you. He took the cup for you. He hung on a cross for you. Your sin was, and my sin, all this is yours and mine, was put on him on that cross. But he also prayed for a protective hedge. That's the kind of father that we serve. I stand this morning ashamed sometimes that I don't do him justice. I don't stand for him like I should. I don't say the things that need to be said sometimes. I don't do the things that need to be done sometimes. And sometimes I like looking in the mirror and, and saying, Kenny, I think you would enjoy this. And go enjoy something that I think Kenny would enjoy instead of what God would be pleased with. I'm not telling you you're wrong this morning. I'm just saying, look what our Heavenly Father has done. That's all I'm trying to point out this morning. When we are in this time, this season, when we're at Christmas, you think about the things that he's done. Easter, you think about the things that he's done. It's not only those times, but it's the times we think about them a little harder. So this morning, as he prayed for us and gave us the truth to share, to tell others in the world, what are we doing about it? Where do we stand? I can't answer that question for you. And I've done told you I'm ashamed of myself that I don't do enough. So Father, forgive me. Where do you stand? 
Look at what our Heavenly Father has done for each and every one of us. Look where He has brought us from and where He has brought us to. Are you ready to take the next step to get deeper in your relationship with Him? Because He took the cup for you. He died on the cross for you. And He loved you enough to send intercession to the Heavenly Father. To strengthen you in times like these. If you would stand with me this morning, the altar is open. Hymn number 117 in your Moravian hymnal, we will sing together. My Redeemer, overwhelmed with anguish. May grace, peace, and love be unto you from our Heavenly Father. May you be blessed as you go this week. And we pray that we would just share truth with a world that is lost and dying. And show them mercy 
as only Jesus can through us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.